Yeah. Okay, good afternoon. Don't so, heritage, conservation, urban re regeneration. Um, well, we are within a building that would be included in that. Uh, everything really is about heritage, and the one that I've got an expertise on is this: is this sort of architectural buildings, objects, material, culture, and space. Um, so I was particularly interested this morning in a way to be reminded of something that we all know and that I've been thinking about quite a lot and that is that the hill is not being dealt with necessarily. I mean, what hospitals deal with is the symptoms, but of course the nature, the reason for it uh, is well outside it, uh, let alone all this discussion about hospitals having to be, for instance, beautiful spaces because people need to recover, not in an environment that doesn't foster that. So anyway, I suppose we all call it in different ways, and I call it in my own way, and, and I'll tell you at the end. Uh, my expertise is to do, or begins, with what we do with buildings that fall under this umbrella of heritage that need attention, such as this church, for instance. And it began uh, working for the Institute of Historical Monuments in France for a couple of years, where I was trained and learned and measured and put together uh, 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 plans for the restorations of different buildings, whether it is uh, 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 in the north or central. Uh, uh, the system in France is quite heavily regulated, so we were working in certain departments of the country from the south to the north, whether churches, castles, villas, etc. Now, from that, I, I suppose that gave me the background for all of the architectural history uh, work and the books I've written. Uh, this is one, and it's about early modern Rome, and it's about a particular uh, palazzo that, in fact, was very recently restored uh, in the very centre of Rome as the new Fendi headquarter after a very lengthy battle, not least uh, to do with how you would put the money together to buy something that's basically no price. Uh, and the sort of work I was doing with the kind of archaeological and conservation training I had was really um, understanding how the whole thing was being built, um, the materials, the construction techniques, um, and what that shows in terms of how such a major uh, 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 infrastructure really comes uh, about. And all of that work then fed into the uh, various campaigns for restoration and also with the lobbying for it to be saved as it stayed for several years, completely empty. Uh, another area I've been working on, my expertise within architectural history is really early modern Europe. And so another uh, capital, and European capitals, uh, so another capital I've been working on for many years is London, and particularly the area around the Strand. Um, and this is uh, a, a book that recently came out called London, London's Golden Mile. Um, now, what is the impact of these things, apart from really reconstructing a piece of major history? about the social, architecture, and urban development of London that had been uh, uh, overlooked. I, I suppose, again, the kind of archaeological, practical, conservationist side of me uh, uh, was then translated into real impact insofar as bits and pieces of these great houses, such as so-called York House Watergate in the garden of the Victorian Embankment there, or indeed bits of other palaces survived, that, have been moved, that is in Poplar, for instance, that arch, uh, uh, were then understood and fed into uh, campaigns for restoring and making these things really available to the public. And I'm afraid I can't play that video there. But this is by the Heritage of London Trust, which has got the logo, which is exactly based on the Watergate, because, of course, we're talking about the Thames, we're talking about a river and environment. And that would have been the entrance into these uh, great houses. That video there shows uh, how the communities of Poplar, that uh, uh, some, of, some of whom are very disadvantaged, uh, were really brought together into this project, which was 
arguably just about the restoration of an art. But that became something that involved schools, the community, the centre that it belongs to, which is a community centre. And so all of a sudden, all these this simple bits of heritage became the vehicle for uh, uh, quite an interesting engagement uh, and outreach uh, sets of program, programs. Now, bigger scale, uh, you will know that the Aldwych area, just in front of Somerset House, where St Mary's Strand is, which was, up until recently, uh, a no-way area, basically, with all that dreadful traffic. If the only thing you would want is to not be there, considering that you have King's College there and Somerset House in the quarter and all of that, these students would have been crammed in that pavement uh, in ways that really uh, uh, were terrible. So it's been pedestrianised. It's called the pedestrianisation of the Strand Project, the old width bit, bit is the first part and um, work on uh, uh, architectural history and really rebuilding the area as it was and the importance of the river incidentally which is completely lost uh, then uh, uh, can have an impact in, and that's what I'm trying to do in terms of lobbying for the whole, this is a government led scheme lobbying for the whole pedestrianisation of the whole of the strand basically. Um, Riverine Settings, this is uh, a book that myself and my colleague, Jerry Atla, there, uh, uh, put together after an international conference called Riverine, uh, where we looked at uh, very broadly uh, from east to west globally, but also in terms of different perspectives, uh, architects, scholars, various types of professionals, poets, uh, dealt with such environment and you know very topically that's of course the Thames um, and that in a way was also intended to be a tool for educators policy makers and professionals to really think how the academic side of things can then instruct uh, as it were the real impact in various strands I have done a fair amount of uh, journalism in terms <coughs> of conservation campaigns you can see here some of the things I've written about from traditional Japanese houses to the Barbican or Robin Hood Garden States or the Leicester uh, Engineering Building um, and as you know some of those in, uh, for instance again in Poplar Robin Hood Gardens there which is now uh, half demolished uh, was, 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 was uh, uh, the subject of a very uh, intense campaign for saving uh, involving English heritage, etc., and then it wasn't listed, and now bits of it are in the DNA in storage. Uh, half of it is still there, and then the other half is gone. So, now what I what, what I'm trying to do here, and this is perhaps a bit of a provocative picture. Uh, so that's me talking to Sir John Soane, metaphorically, in one of quintessentially the hubs for. Uh, fostering architectural education, but really in the biggest possible sense. So, Soane, who is, of course, uh, uh, you know, uh, a kind of self-made individual, eventually Royal Academy professor uh, of architecture, instituted this Academy for Architecture, which still is, that's its campaign, uh, that is uh, the status, the, 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 you know, the, the legacy and incidentally, the work I'm doing there in particular is a, a new a critical edition of a set of about 300 drawings that go from the 1590s to the 1620s by one of those fantastic early modern figures that were, went around the country and drew all these buildings and designed quite a few of those as a result. So apart from the specific of this job, which is highly scholarly, uh, the point is to how do you then translate that into... Uh, something that uh, gets wider access, and and so there, that is the kind of you know me talking to so and sort of asking what what is it that we're doing, uh, and really, first of all, we brought together this particular set of drawings of mine, which is quite unique, with other architectural drawings of period, including those by great architects such as Inigo Jones, and you can see some of the drawings. That this is the interiors of the Reba. VNA uh, in London. And then what we want to do, which will happen uh, hopefully in 2026, is to 
create an exhibition about what it was that uh, emerging, the, the emerging figure of the artist in the early modern period were doing by, and what these drawings were about, but you would still wonder, well, that's, a, that's all right, but, you know, it's still sort of within the kind of highly scholarly. Well, it's an exhibition on its own, on its own, it's free, and the point is to attach to these things through various activities. For instance, my work was filmed, and part of this work included the understanding of what actually the printed object, the book, the paper, was actually telling you. And that has quite a lot of pedagogical tools for all sorts of people, from the professionals to the school children, basically. And so that's really the scope of, uh, if you like, the, the outreach of this uh, exhibition. And in a way, linking it back to uh, the mission that the likes of Johnson uh, set. So to conclude, um, that expertise there, um, in architectural history and theory, and in conservation, and space and material cultures, which in a way you could just call it heritage. It's really to do with rethinking the value, scope, use, and potential uh, uh, of space, whether it is a single building that needs attention or bigger spaces. There's, of course, uh, a lot of academic and professional collaboration going on. Uh, 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 at Kent, in the school, I'm the program director, and I've been following uh, uh, the use of real live briefs uh, based in Chatham for a number of years, begun by Chloe and Mike in our March, uh, which, which continues. Um, we talk, therefore, about the regeneration at different scale, uh, whether it is an object or, or an urban space, public engagement, widening participation with an educational scope, uh, and really, an improved economy, because that has a lot of potential of attracting all sorts of stakeholders and externals. The better living condition and environment that we've been talking about, and in a way, the help that you were mentioning, for me, means really, in essence, fostering beauty, which, as I always said, saves us, and I think you actually made it scientific, in a way. Thank you very much.